Jira Basics, Module 3, Labels and Priorities. Jira Basics in 7 tutorials. Over the course of 7 tutorials, we're looking at Jira and all the fundamental concepts associated with Jira. Everything from installing, looking at Jira projects, labeling and prioritizing issues, and configuring workflow and status. And finally, in the last three modules, we're looking at versions and components, dashboards and reporting, and some of the more advanced concepts associated with searching for issues. In this module, module three, we're looking at labels and priorities. Two properties of issues that we can use to categorize and organize our issues within JIRA. JIRA Basics, Module 3, Labels and Priorities. Learning objectives for this module include looking at why we need labels and priorities, how we go about configuring the values we require for our priorities within a project, how we define different label values for issues, and then how we look at using labels and priorities to search for specific issues that have those properties associated with labels and priorities. And finally, we'll look at bulk changes and how we can bulk update groups of JIRA issues all in one go. When you create issues in JIRA, each issue has associated with it a number of properties. And those properties can be the type of issue. So in this instance, we have a task, the status, whether it's open, completed, etc., and the assignee, and watchers, attachments, etc. In this particular module, we're going to look at two specific priorities. We're going to look at two specific properties. That is the priority, i.e. how important this issue is, and labels, which is a configurable way of associating a tag or a label with a particular issue. Both of these properties allow you to search and group your issues based on those particular properties. So for example, we can look for all medium priority issues within JIRA as part of our Acme Accounting Systems project. So let's take a more specific example. We have our Acme accounting system here, and when we create new issues as part of that project, and we enter the mandatory fields like the summary, and we set our reporter, we could put some description in, we'll notice that there is a priority field, and that priority has a pre-configured number of priority values that we can select from, low, medium, and high. And we could select this as a low priority issue, one that doesn't need dealing with immediately. And when we save that particular issue, what we should see is our new issue created within our project. And that particular issue, AAS12, has a priority value or a property for that priority set to low. Now when we come to search all of our issues within this particular project, we can search and group based on that priority. So for example, click on our view all issues and filters link. Make sure we're displaying the priority filter criteria. And then we can select and filter based on specific priority values. In this instance, show us all of our low priority issues for this particular project. So when you first create a new project, Depending on the type of project you create, that project will already have with it associated a set of priority values. If you want to modify those values and configure them slightly differently for your particular project, then you can do this as follows. Select our project from the project drop down again. And from here we see some of our project menu options. And one of those options is the project settings. Under the project settings then, In the list of settings, we'll see the priorities option. And under priorities, we can configure and change and modify any of the priority values that were preset and configured as part of this project when it was first created. In this example then, under actions, I can select edit priorities. 
I'm asked to enter my password again because this is an administration action that I'm carrying out. And from here I can add some additional priority values to my selected priorities within this project. Now bear in mind it's not quite as simple as just typing in and adding new priority values with JIRA. These priorities are included as part of a priority scheme and we'd have to get into modifying that scheme that's then applied to multiple projects if we wanted to add custom fields or custom values within here. We'll come on to that in a future module when we look at more of the configuration of schemes and assigning those within projects. But for now I've added two new priority values and I can save and update that. And when I come to create new issues within JIRA, what we should see in the drop down for the priorities is that we now have five values to select from within that priority drop down. So that's priorities then. If we continue to create this particular issue, our second new issue today, add some description perhaps, we've set our priority to medium. We also have the next property of the issue that we wanted to look at, which is that of labels. And you can really think of labels as really a, a free format text tag that you can assign to a particular issue. So perhaps we're raising issues and we have different business units. Maybe we have business unit in London, in New York and in Paris. And we can say that this particular issue is associated with our project in our London office. So we could give this issue a London label and that custom label is now configured within JIRA and is available when we raise other issues. And really the key point to remember here is that any user can assign any label he or she likes to an issue. There's nothing to stop you adding in random labels that have no meaning whatsoever. And this is both really a strength and a weakness in, in JIRA terms. It's a weakness in as much as you can very quickly end up with a very messy set of labels. Uh, maybe you've got spelling mistakes in some labels or you've got meaningless labels like we have in this particular example. And it's a strength in some ways as it means that you don't have to have administrator rights to configure label values and any user can go in and, and make um, intelligent label associations with their JIRA issues. Again, once you've associated a label with a JIRA issue, you can then use the search capability within JIRA. We go back to our project, click on the view all issues and filters. And in a similar way to how we search based on priorities, we can now search based on labels by selecting from the drop down to show the label option. And then from the labels, we can filter all the issues that are displayed based on particular labels. And in this instance, our label of London shows up two JIRA issues. As I said, one of the weaknesses of labels is that anybody can enter any label they like and it can quickly become very messy. So it's important to carry out some regular maintenance of those labels, maybe look through the label search list to see what kind of labels have been added and then update and delete some of those labels on specific um, JIRA issues. So for example, here we've got a label of keyboard shortcuts, which doesn't seem to be consistent with everything else. I might search for issues that have that particular label and then I might delete that label from those issues that show that label and then that label will automatically be deleted from the, the pre-configured list that others have visibility of. So as part of the process of creating those issues then we've seen how we can assign priorities to those issues and we can give those particular issues labels and once we've given those priorities and labels how we can use the filters and search criteria to group or identify all of those issues with those specific priorities and issue types. What we can also do once we've selected and searched based on a particular priority, for example, maybe we search just for our medium, high and highest issue priorities, is we can then use the tools menu here to do bulk updates on all of those issues that have been identified as high, highest and medium priority. 
and we can do that with the bolt change all 12 issues that we've identified. And Jira steps us through this four step process with step one where we choose the issues and we can select all of the issues because they all have that high priority status. If we scroll to the right we'll see they're all in an open status and they all have this priority of medium, high or highest. And when we click on the next button, we choose the operation or the bulk update operation we want to carry out. For example, maybe we want to change all of these issues to medium, high or highest priority to all being the highest priority. So on the next step, then we've got the operation details and we can scroll down. We can select to change the priority, which is listed at the top here. Now all 12 of these issues will be set to the highest priority and we could also assign a label to them. So we could add to existing and assign all of these to maybe another office or give that a label of Paris, for example. Click on the next button. Jira asks for confirmation. We've got two changes, priority and the labels that we're updating. We're updating all 12 issues. All of those issues are listed below. Click the confirm button and Jira updates all 12 in a bulk update operation. Click on the acknowledge button and that bulk update operation is now complete. And you can see, for example, when we're searching based on priority, that everything now is at the highest priority and everything has a label added to it of Paris. So to summarize our learning objectives for module three, we covered labels and priorities. We looked at why we needed those labels and priorities, and we looked at how to configure those priority values within the administration area of JIRA. We saw how we can create label values and that those custom values can be assigned by users who don't have administration rights. And we looked at the search capability within JIRA that allowed us to search for groups of issues within a project that have particular labels or priorities, for example. We then saw how we can take the results from that search and complete bulk changes to large numbers of issues, updating multiple values in a single sweep with a bulk update. In the next module, module four, we'll look at workflow and status values and how we can configure JIRA to work and track based on a workflow that's more closely aligned with our projects and the way we work in our, within our organization by custom configuring those workflows and status values. Thank you.